All right, the Yamaha adventure continues. This time we're gonna dive into a little bit of sidewinder action. So let's hop on the road, we're gonna go pick up another project. All right, behind me is my new project or what I was hoping to be my new project. Um, it is a Vans RV9 with a Yamaha sidewinder engine on it. This is Teal Jenkins' former airplane. Um, it does have a little bit of history that goes along with it. So complete redesign of the firewall forward over the last two years because he did experience an in-flight fire and that happened basically because this fuel rail up here there's a bolt right here and a bolt right here and uh since they've been drilled for so you can safety wire but they backed out and the fuel rail popped off that caused the fire inside the engine compartment and it destroyed the basically the engine and the cowling um, so he basically took, I'll show a picture of the rendering, the opportunity to redesign it all, reposition everything, do a new, new engine mount modifications. Um, you got your intercooler on the right side and the radiator on the left side. Those are all incorporated into this CAD design cowling. It's got air ducting that goes into those um, radiators, um, scooped down at the bottom, basically to compensate for the airflow. From the top to the bottom again another scoop for the inner cooler and uh basically everything in the firewall forward is brand new so this engine has never run it's a crate motor brand new gearbox with the low uh, gear ratio to spend an air master three-weighted prop with kato um, blades on it it's got the special uh, sky tracks intake brand new turbo setup um, this is the factory turbo uh, I'll go to the other side and show you the exhaust on that, but brand new brand new turbo from the factory uh, from Yamaha. Uh, this is uh, Teal Jenkins' Skytrax oil reservoir designed specifically for this engine. Uh, you go over to this side, we've got, it's a stock manifold. It's a stock turbo position, which this engine mount allows us to utilize. Um, so the setup is really cool. It's got a wideband O2 sensor to go into the uh, link ECU from Hyper or from uh, Hypersports. New radiator, dual battery system, two EarthX batteries um, are wired in there. And down here in the bottom, this has an auxiliary water pump. So that was basically utilized to help cool the engine after shutdown, but it's also a safety uh, feature in case you lose your water pump. Um, so the water pump's incorporated in this engine. Initially, they had some issues with the water pump um, impeller having issues. Teal's redesigned it. I think it's the third version. They had real good success with what's on there. It does have that electric water pump as a backup. Um, I'll show some of the avionics. I basically have a um, Dynon Skyview, brand new, in the box. It has been wired, so there is a harness for that, all wired in already. It will go right here. Then we've got an Icon uh, radio, uh, Garmin uh, 327 with the ADS-B out box over here and an intercom. It does have autopilot with the Dynon autopilot control and the Dynon autopilot servo. This is the pitch servo. The roll servo is in the wing. It also has a prop control, both with the pitch adjustment here and then the air master control. On the other side, let me come around the other side. You can see the wiring. I've just been going through it, kind of labeling what everything is. But you, over here, you've got your uh, Hypersports Link ECU, um, an AM 22 channel CAN bus for sensors that takes sensors from everywhere. You've got gearbox temperature, you've got water temperature, oil pressure, all kinds of sensors all over this engine to monitor things. Um, down into the fuse section here, uh, there's a couple additional units to the engine uh, monitoring. There's a, another 12 channel um, can input, uh, input here. Um, I've got a couple other boxes for the links, the can lambda sensor, and I'm not quite sure what this one, I think it's an atmospheric um, one that comes with the engine right there. So. That's basically your, your setup firewall forward. I don't know if I touched on too much on this cowling. 
This was designed in, in CAD. Um, Teal then took that CAD file, sent it to a company down in uh, Southern California that CNC'd a foam plug and then made this cowling out of carbon fiber. It is awesome. It looks really cool. I'll show a picture of it with it on the, on the airframe. Right behind that, you can see this piece of aluminum. That is the top piece that goes up here once you're done with the wiring. There is, um, that's the windshield that was on it, or the, the canopy. It's toast, so over in that crate is a brand new canopy to go on it. This rear skin um, had some imperfections in it, so I removed that and the replacement I have also um, to go on that. Now, uh, the wings are down in my hangar. Um, they're in good shape. The tail's also down in my hangar, also in good shape, removed for transportation. Um, got an extra set of tires for everything. Um, really, everything you need to fly it is here. So, or to reassemble it and fly it is here. The reason I'm putting it up for sale is uh, when I decided to take on the project at a time frame and a certain amount of time to spend on it, and I have kind of taken a good look at everything that needs to be done, and I was pretty happy with what was needed to put it all back together to go flying. Then I removed this rear skin to get ready to replace that. And prior to Teal purchasing this aircraft, it was involved in an incident where it reared off the runway and it flipped over. Um, that was in 2020. Uh, they replaced the vertical and put brand new wings on it. So the wings have very low time on it. They also replaced the cowling, but the cowling has since been removed for the new one. Um, I believe that in that incident, there was some damage that wasn't addressed, and that's what I found. So, I like to be full disclosure. So this is the baggage compartment here. This is the section behind the baggage compartment. And this is also where the forward half fuselage is joined to the back half of the fuselage with this seam right here. So there's a double rivet rail right here. You got thicker gauge aluminum, goes thinner right here. So this seam right here is, um, you know, I don't know historically if there's been any issues with vans dealing with this, but I believe when it went over on its back, it took kind of a compression impact right there. And you can see kind of this discoloration right here where they, looks like they maybe sanded it, but if you get down in here, I'll show some close-ups, but there's a slight crack right here. And then this longeron is actually formed into this bottom skin right here. And at the very end of this, it's not connected to the bulkhead. That, that's the way it's designed. But right at the end of that, there's a little bit of a crack right there. And it's the same thing on the other side of the crack in that spot. And then these little teeny cracks in this um, piece right here. Problem with that is it's the bottom skin and the side skins. So, and it's on a seam. Um, the other spot that I noticed right here underneath the, the bell crank. It looks like this is a, a basically a, a rivet driving error that's created a little bit of damage to that piece, so I would replace that piece as well. Now, I have to admit that I don't have any building experience with aluminum airplanes. So, some of you guys might get, you know, be jumping at the opportunity to get into this because you might see this as a real easy repair as far as putting in a doubler or, or some way of doing it that um, you know, falls AC-43. I've kind of read through it. What, what I'm kind of finding hard to figure out the best way to do it is the fact that it's on that seam and it's also at the end of, of basically a Longeron support. So I would probably just replace the parts and that would involve basically rebuilding the back half of the airplane. Um, the parts aren't expensive, you know, a whole skin for the sides, like under 200 bucks. So I, I don't really think it's a, a price issue, it's just a time issue, a labor issue that I don't have time to do it. And it also would mean that you'd have quite a few sections that aren't painted and it would, it would require a much more involved paint job. Um, I know it, it's not great state as it is first paint, but I was going to probably patch it until a later date to paint the whole thing, but with bare skin, bare aluminum in places, I think paint would then need to be addressed, possibly a full strip in paint. So anyway, there's there's a lot here. It's a, a very sound project, but I, I want to be very clear that there are some issues that need to be replaced with the fuselage. Um, and then, of course, 
it's whether or not you'd be interested in the Yamaha Firewall Ford. I've kind of gone back and forth on it myself on whether it's the best setup. Um, the performance of it is outstanding. Um, the fact that it's the only one of its kind, you know, there's some, some issues that come along with that. Um, it definitely could be modified back to a Lycoming. It would require a new engine mount, new cowling, obviously an engine. Um, there's not a ton that needs to be done um, f from the firewall back to accommodate that. Um, so really, you can go either way on it. All right, so that's basically an overview of what's there. Um, I, can, you know, I can show you the wings and stuff are down in my, my uh, hangar, but it's a real tempting project to take on. Like I said, I just don't have the time right now to get into the airframe repair. Um, but, you know, putting it down on, on paper, what it's worth, you know, there's over $30,000 in this engine setup and then the rest of the airplane. So, you know, I don't think I'm asking a ridiculous amount for it. If you guys are interested, um, you know, if, if there isn't anyone out there who's interested in the whole thing with this engine setup, then I would consider separating them. Um, and you guys can contact me about that. I'm not going to do that right away because I like to give the opportunity to someone who will see this through and see it fly this way because I think it's really cool that Teal's done all this work. Um, but if, if there's not a taker out there, then, you know, I would sell the airframe part from the firewall forward. And if anyone's just interested in the firewall forward, you know, then we can look at that at, at uh, uh, a later date, I guess. So anyway, that's the Vans RV9 project that I have for sale. Uh, just give me a call if you guys are interested and uh, be happy to talk to you about it.